Sarah sat in Aunt Og's kitchen. They were eating a wonderful dinner, cheese pie, then gooseberry tarts. Hush, said Og. She held up her wrinkly old hand. Hush, there it goes again. Sarah could hear the waves on the beach, that's all. Humming, said Og. Pests in my kitchen, that's what. She left the table and poked around in the cupboards, muttering, Flies get in the butter, ants get in the soup, bugs get into the bread. Oh, dearie me. Sarah saw all sorts of insect poison in the cupboards, little dishes full of sticky stuff, little cakes of beetle bait. As she put another piece of pie into her mouth, she saw two long-legged little brown things run across the mat. Sarah gulped. Aunt Og hadn't noticed. She was scratching a wrinkly old finger into her grey hair, still muttering. Uh, what are you looking for? asked Sarah. Humming beetles, said Og. I've heard them. Have you seen them? asked Sarah. No, but I still don't want them in my kitchen, grumbled Og. Are you sure it's beetles? asked Sarah. It isn't kangaroos, said Og. Deary me, I'm tired out. All this humming makes me want my bed. She stomped out of the kitchen. All at once, Sarah could hear the hum. It was like someone singing. It was very high and rollicking. Pretty funny beetles, said Sarah. Aunt Og rushed in with a can of fly spray. She pulled all the cupboards open and sprayed as hard as she could. <laughs> Sarah coughed. Aunt Og went back to bed. Someone else coughed. Someone in the cupboards. Someone who didn't like the fly spray. Sarah hid under the kitchen table. She kept very still. She could hear the waves on the beach and the squeak of Aunt Og's mattress as she turned over in bed. Slowly, one of the cupboard doors swung open. Two dark shapes came stepping out. They were very tiny and had skinny little legs and skinny long feelers on smooth round heads, like space helmets. Very funny beetles, said Sarah. The two long-legged shapes clung together and said, Oh, heck! Don't worry, said Sarah. I won't hurt you, but what are you? We call us people, said the long-legged shapes. But we're not like you people. So why do you live in this person's house? asked Sarah. Actually, said one of the shapes, we lived in a spaceship, but it got stuck. Stuck in a tree, said the other shape. There's a pine tree down by the beach. Are you space people? asked Sarah. Then how did you get in here? Spaceship got stuck in the tree, said one of the space persons. We got stuck on some pine cones. Og came snipping with her scissors and snipped the cones off. Og popped the cones in her basket and brought the basket here. And here we are, still stuck. It's awful, said the other space person. Nothing to do but sing. It opened its mouth wide, but Sarah hushed it just in time. Og will come back with a fly spray, she warned. Be quiet, and I'll let you out. She went to the back door. She pulled back the big iron bolt at the top of the door. Then she pulled back the big iron bolt at the bottom. Then she had to unhook the chain and turn the key. Oh, phew, said Sarah, and opened the door. Well, she said, what are you waiting for? The little space people wiggled their feelers. It's dark out there. We don't know the way, they said. There was a very loud squeak from Aunt Og's bed. Help, cried the space people. Take us to our ship, please, before she sprays us again. Oh, boy, said Sarah. She went down the path to the gate. The space people ran after her. Oh, they cried. Sharp stones. We've got bare feet. Bare feet and space helmets. Oh, boy. Boy, said Sarah, and she picked them up. Down the road she went, past the new white post box on the corner, past the telephone box and the bus stop. 
That's far enough, she said, and put the space people down on the soft grass next to the bus shelter. There's the tree. Is your ship still there? The space people looked at the pine tree. Wacko, they said. Yes, it is. All that Sarah could see was an extra large pine cone high up in the branches, but the space people did look very excited. Goodbye then, said Sarah. The space people looked up at her. Thank you very much, they said. Then they held each other's hands and walked away over to the tree. She could hear them starting to sing again. Sarah got down on her hands and knees and peered into the gutter. She found one slug. And a dead cricket. Good," said Sarah. "I'll take these home and put them in the cupboard near Og's beetle bait. She'll think she's caught the humming beetles. She'll be ever so pleased about it." She put the cricket in her pocket and held the slug in her hand. She walked home, past the bus stop and the telephone box, past the new white post box on the corner. When she was inside, she shut the door and pushed back all the heavy iron bolts. And then she went to bed.